Okay, let's keep going. So one of the questions you were asked as well was to draw a labeled flowchart illustrating the marketing chain for beef from farm to an export or local market. Identify three processes that would occur in each section of the chain. Some of you drew some awesome diagrams and gave me more than way more than three processes, which is fantastic. As many as you can um, would be superb, and it means you have a, a huge sort of deposit in your head that you can draw upon. Um, something like this would get you the marks, okay? It's very simple, but it does what it says, okay? Input, lean cattle, vet services, feed and water, extension services, production, feeding and management of the animals, marketing, buying, transport and distribution, processing, slaughtering, chilling and packing, and then consumption, domestic consumption and beyond. This is very, very simplified version. Um, we're gonna go over it in more detail, but at the very, very least, if you struggled with this, commit that to memory, okay? And have that as your sort of go-to if you get asked anything about the marketing chain. I'm gonna go in way more detail, um, which I would encourage as well, but at the very least, you should be able to replicate that um, in the exam. We went into more detail um, and we had these seven main stages, okay? Number one, cattle breeding. Number two, cow-calf ranching or reading. Ranching is quite American, we might change that just to reading or farming. Number three, auction markets. Number four, cattle feeders. Five, beef processing. Six, retail. And seven, export. So we'll go through each one of these stages in the production cycle. So the first one, and the first step in the beef production chain and can take place naturally or through artificial insemination. So we're talking about cattle breeding. You'll have somebody that breeds certain types of cattle. Cattle breeders work to raise cattle with specific and superior genetics that can be sold to cow-calf ranchers. So you may be a Hereford breeder, you may breed Murray Greys, or you may breed Brangus. Okay, so the specific breed that you're after, you tend to stick to that one breed and you'll be an expert and have, you'd claim hopefully to have the highest quality genetics. So if you're a Hereford farmer, you'd claim to have the best Herefords and they would be, their progeny, their offspring would have to be um, meeting the market specifications. Okay, you're gonna produce animals that people wanna buy off you because they know when they buy off of you that that cow is gonna be raised and be able to so sell that cow um, at their required market specs. Okay, the next step then is cow-calf producers keep a herd of cows that are bred annually to produce a crop of calves. These cow-calf pairs are raised on pasture. Operations are widespread throughout beef producing countries and the goal of a cow-calf operation is to produce young beef cattle which are then usually sold. So this is cow-calf farming or cow-calf ranching. Ranching is quite American, so maybe say cow-calf farming, but you get the point. So that is a specific role as well. You might have a cow-calf producer who just constantly produces um, young beef cattle, and then they sell those young uh, to other people. Where does all this take place? Well, this is where cattle are bought and sold, and it's called an auction market. There are many different types of sales. Some sales are cow-calf pairs that can be purchased by farmers or ranchers and feeder calves that are ready for finishing are bought by cattle feeders and cattle are also purchased at auction by beef processors. So all of the stages that we talk about in this process, this marketing cycle, this process cycle, um, they can all be bought and sold in an auction market, okay? So this is the main place where um, all different people from different areas of this production line would go and purchase the type of cattle that they require that moment in time. So cattle feeders then, who are they? Cattle feeders typically purchase feeder calves, so the baby calves, anywhere from 600 to 900 pounds. These cattle enter a feeding operation where they are fed a high energy ration of forage and grain, such as barley, wheat or corn and the cattle can spend anywhere from 60 to 220 days at a feeding operation until they reach the market weight. So you can see, if you're a cattle feeder, you're 
production is set up totally different from a cow calf farmer. You are getting the calves in and you're feeding them up as quickly as possible on quite high quality food if you can afford to, uh, to get them to market spec. And you can see there anywhere from 60, so two months, 60 days to 220 days. So typically they're not going to have these cows for more than a year, uh, much less than that. And they just really are all geared to feeding them to get to market specification as quickly as possible. So you can see that makes sense. If you're a cow calf rancher, the previous part of the process, you're not really geared up to um, feeding them as much as possible. You're geared up to make sure that your um, cows give birth effectively. You want to have a high birth rate. So you're more geared to proper care, animal husbandry of the females to ensure that the pregnancy is followed all the way through. A cattle feeder, on the other hand, is like, I just need to get these guys as big as possible. So you can see why you wouldn't do both. You wouldn't do everything in one farm um, because you'd need to then have different areas of your farm set up to do very different things. Then once you have met your market spec or your, your cattle is good to go to market, the meat packing industry takes over the beef processing side of things. So the meat packing industry handles the processing of cattle and the harvesting of beef, as well as the packaging and the distribution of beef products. This is where you'd have your pH tests, for example. So Meat Standards Australia will be involved at this step, uh, ensuring that the, the meat that's going out is fit for human consumption, but also they grade it. So they tell you how good or how high quality or low quality that meat may be as well at that point. After it's been approved and got the appropriate labels on it, the end beef product is sold by packers to the final consumer through grocery stores and other retail outlets. So once it's been through the processing and it's all okay, that it's, it's safe to eat, then it'll go to whatever market it was um, intended to go to. And another market could be the export market. So this one that I just showed you before was domestic. So this is like coals and woolies staying in the country. International markets or export markets are going abroad. So as a result of the small population and large ratio of livestock to people in Australia, Australian red meat production far exceeds domestic consumption. So what they're saying here is that you guys in Australia produce more meat than is being eaten by Australians. So this makes Australia one of the largest exporters of red meat in the world. In 2016, Australia exported 1 million tonnes of beef and exports for this period were valued at $7.4 billion. That's a lot of money. Um, so it's a huge, huge industry and that's why we've obviously been focusing on this as well. And it's massive. $7.4 billion is a massive boost to the Australian economy. Okay, guys, you may want to pause again. That's okay. Review your notes and we'll move on.